You look at the uh, और वो हमारा काम पिंडी और कश्मीर के अंदर 
बड़े पैमाने पर जारी है उसके अंदर हम वोमेन और चाइल्ड डेवलपमेंट के ऊपर इन पर्टिकुलर बात करते हैं तो ये तारुफ था इस्लामिक लीफ का डॉक्टर हानी जैसे मैंने बताया मेडिकल डॉक्टर हैं इस्लामिक लीफ परफॉर्म किया लेकिन इसके अलावा बहुत सारी ऐसी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैं जिनके ना सिर्फ फाउंडर हैं बल्कि उनको चलाने वाले भी हैं उनमें कई नाम हैं ह्यूमानिटेरियन फोरम एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है जो जो वेस्ट के वर्ल्ड को और साउथ को उसने इंगेज किया है पर्टिकुलरली गर्व को क्योंकि गर्व जो था वो बिल्कुल मेन स्ट्रीम से बाहर था तो उसको लेकर आना उसे कनेक्ट करना और एक बहुत बड़ी ड्राइव थी पिछले 2016 में उससे वही पहले वर्ल्ड ह्यूमानिटेरियन समिट के सूरत में उसमें डॉक्टर रहानी जो है वो एक बहुत बड़ा रोल था इनका जो उसमें प्ले किया है इसके अलावा इदारे हैं जैसे यूके में मुस्लिम चैरिटी फाउंडेशन है फिर जक़ात फाउंडेशन है और बहुत सारे ऐसे इदारे हैं जिनके कैटलिस्ट के तौर पर जिनके एक मुतहरक फर्द के तौर पर वहाँ पर मौजूद रहे तो चूँकि विजिट के लिए यहाँ आ रहे थे हम दारबंदी दो दिन क्योंकि हमारा वहाँ पे एक अरसे से वहाँ पर काम है तो वहाँ देखा उन लोगों से मिले और यहाँ पर था तो हमने ये प्लान तरतीब दिया कि आप लोगों से मुलाकात भी हो जाएगी और डॉक्टर हानी की जो इनके ख्याल हैं और जो तजर्बात हैं बिलखसूस डेवलपमेंट और कलेबरेशन फॉर डेवलपमेंट के तनाजर में कि वहाँ पे किस तरीके से लोगों ने मिल कर के सक्सेसफुल एक्सपीरियंस आए हैं और उनको वो फिर हमारे साथ भी शेयर करें ताकि ना सिर्फ बलोचिस्तान लेकिन तो पूरे हर पूरे पाकिस्तान का एजेंडा है लेकिन बलोचिस्तान में बिलखसूस के डेवलपमेंट एक सिग्निफिकेंट मैटर है और उसको लेकर के ना सिर्फ एन जी ओ चल रही है बल्कि पोलिटिकल भी और समाजी जो कोई भी है वो इस ड्राइव का हिस्सा है तो इस लिहाज से अब डॉक्टर हानी को मैं दावा दूंगा कि वो आएँ और आकर इसके ऊपर बात करें आपके साथ कोशिश करेंगे कि हम इस गुफ्तु को बीस पच्चीस मिनट तक रखें और उसके बाद फिर आपका अगर इंटरेक्शन है आपकी तरफ से कोई सवाल आते हैं या एक्सपीरियंसिस हैं यू मोर देन वेलकम टू डू सो इन और देन विल ट्राई टू वाइंड अप बाय होपफुली बाय नाइन इंशाल्लाह और इवन बिफोर दैट सो डॉक्टर हानी इट्स ऑल योर्स इंशाल्लाह अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह व सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि व सल्लम माय अपॉलॉजी फॉर स्पीकिंग इंग्लिश आई शुड स्पीक आइदर उर्दू और बलूशी दैट्स राइट पश्तू और पश्तू तो वी मल्टीलैंग्वेज एनीवे So my other apology that my presentation, because my secretary did not send it to me, I have to write something uh, today to have it with us. I am combining three topics together because I know that most of you has got very vast experience in the field work and in the local work, national work, and the international work. So I cannot lecture you because you are all learned, able, and you can make that change. development external relation and partnership let me start with talking about partnership which is very essential partnership is a something that we cannot afford not to do it whether we are a multi million organization or not in europe and america they have an organization called schr it has a top 13 organizations in the world including oxfam save the children uh, world vision plan and the others if you calculate the budget of this organization it will go rocket high in billions of dollars but they sit down to coordinate to communicate to plan and make partnership we cannot afford in our country pakistan not to talk about partnership becomes like the kalima When people come to Islam, they say, "Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, shahdu Muhammad Rasulullah." And I have to suspect, through my experience, those individuals who do not want to build partnership with others. Lack of partnership with others mean lack of transparency, and leading to corruption. Seriously, seriously, seriously. That now we are facing. If we look only at Balochistan, the size of Balochistan, the drought which is hitting the area, the needs of the people, the distances between the different villages, the difficult road between this village and this village, and I tell you, I'm a big man and a big organization. Don't need your partnership. 
I say, sorry, sorry, sir, you are wrong. You cannot do it alone. You cannot do it alone. We have to kill our ego. We have to kill our ego. We have to kill our ego. Because, before I start talking about the talk, we are all servants of those people living in these villages. Whoever would love to work in social work, in community work, in humanitarian work, in development work, he or she has to consider herself a servant. Otherwise, leave out. We don't want you. Because the real owner of the money which is paid as salaries are those people who have been visiting over the last two days. It's not World Bank. It's not the government. It's not the donor. It is this individual who does not have clean water to drink, does not have a clinic in the field, does not have a school for his children or her children. So let us, let us stand on a principle. The one who owns the money is this individual. The young girl or the young boy or the elderly or the woman who are spending their money on our salaries. If we agree, you can go forward. So ego should not be and never will be on the table of any humanitarian development worker and social worker. How to build partnership? First of all, you have to build partnership with your own team, with your own staff. First, to treat them with dignity, with respect and honor, and to value their contribution, whether they are partners, cleaners, drivers, or whatever you call it. Second is the other organization around us cannot afford not to pick partnership with the local. You call it CBOs or CSOs or this community-based organization plus other organization. Then the local government should not shy from building partnership with the local government. Then the businessmen and the donors. Then the central government. Because if you want money from you, PPF, we have to go to Islamabad because they are very close to the central government. Then media. How can we build partnership with media? Then the embassies in the capital city. Then the representation of the international organization, such as UN, uh, ECHO, and DFID, and others in our, in our city. Then the bigger organization abroad, then the foreign uh, uh, government, then the international agencies working there. So building partnership is like you are building fortress around you. One layer, two layers, three layers, four layers, five layers. Build as many as you can to be protected. Partnership is a protection. It's not vulnerability. Partnership is about how to save money, to save effort, and to have bigger impact. Partnership is, I, t I take my logo. Let me give you an example. Maybe Brother uh, Umair was talking about the World Humanitarian Summit. We made a consultation with PPF three years ago in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Islamabad. To build this consultation, Humanitarian Forum made 36 consultation, uh, 30, no, 39 consultation in 36 countries in less than one and a half years. All done with partnership with the local organization. From Tunisia to Saudi Arabia to Egypt to Pakistan to Afghanistan to Bangladesh to uh, Sri Lanka, South Africa, Kuwait, Bahrain, Emirates, all, all those. We could not have made 36 or 39 consultations in 36 countries in less than one and a half years. This was based on partnership, tripartite partnership, humanitarian forum, local organization, and UN Notch. This is a practical example. Practical example. 
That's why they were treating us high in this uh, summit, which happened two years ago in Istanbul. So I'm going to link the partnership to development and the external relationship. The three have to go together. If you tell me about external relationship, I will say my experience. We started to open the doors of Islamic relief 10 years before September 11. When the sun was shining, the atmosphere is good, there is no Islamophobia, less Islamophobia, there is no counter-terrorism, there is no, 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 all this. We managed to be known to the international community because we opened the door. We did not use the closed door policies. No, no, no. That's why when September 11 came, in spite of the fact we had a big office, we have we're still having it in America. Okay. Investigation happened, of course, to all the Muslim organizations, but Islamic Leaf is still now a $70 million organization. Because of what? Because you open the door. Because you attend conferences. Because you build relationships. Because, you under, we are, because we understand the language, the spoken language in the international media, as well as with the international community. Because we know the humanitarian principles and we follow them. Because we know what we are talking about, we represent the local community. And we defend the local community. Because we started to employ not only Muslims, but non-Muslims as well, inside an organization called Islamic Relief. From the day one, 1991, 92, we have those people working for Islamic Relief. Even my two advisors in advocacy were Shia brothers. One of them was from Azerbaijan, the other one from Pakistan. We didn't have any of these kind of barriers which we build because we do not open up to the greater community, the humanitarian community that we are having and the people that we serve. So external relations is protection. I said partnership is protection. External relation is about how to know or to be known by others who can talk about you in their private meetings. I give an example. When September 11 happened, we, used to, we, had, we had built an, a, a relationship with something organized called CAFUD, Catholic Aid for Overseas Development, which is representative of the uh, Catholic Church, sister of Caritas. But we built it is about 1997-1998. So we visited them in the office, they visited us, then we started to have an MOU to try to agree on the area that we are going to work together. We excluded Sudan, because at that time there was a conflict between Muslim and Christian. But we managed to work where, suggestion, they supported our operation in Afghanistan in 2002. At, at the time of the war in 2001 and 2002. Then we supported them in other areas, like Guatemala, like Goma, with an, it was a volcano there. So we agreed not to work in Sudan. Why? Because it's a conflict. At that time, between what's so called Muslims and Christians, but we agreed to work in different areas. And they bought the money for us in Afghanistan, and we bought the money for them in Guatemala. It doesn't matter how much is the money. But this is the production. When they were talking about Islamic relief in, in, in UK, in London, and privately, behind our back, they were defending us. They were saying, no. No, they are not what you think. They are not what you think. They are not what you think. You know why? Not because we just shook hands with them, but because they knew us two, three years before September 11th. So when you extend your relationship with anybody and everybody. This actually happened with the British government as well. When we're opening the doors, because they were funding us. 
Before DEF, it was called uh, Overseas Development uh, Administration, ODA. I'm not sure if you remember something called ODA, Overseas Development Administration. Yes, you don't know? It was a very small department in the Foreign Office. But when we started to build this relationship, our big project came where? Any suggestion? In 1990, what is uh, Omer? Imo, do you want me to give them the answer or let them to think about it? 97, 98. It was in Kashmir. How much Omer was it? Can I remember? It was six, seven hundred thousand pounds. Even the minister, she told the DFID office in, uh, in Islamabad, she was told by them, they don't have a, a big capacity. They said, we, we trust them. We know them. They are not going to use the money for the wrong reason. They will build their capacity. And started from Kashmir. Then it went to uh, Shaman Camp. You remember Shaman Camp? Ben? Shaman Camp, Brother Omair? In 2001, and 2001, one million pound for the operation in Shaman Camp. But to build the relationship with the government before the war in Afghanistan happened. This is what we need. We don't have anything to hide. Why we shy out? We represent the most vulnerable people. We have to be vocal and speak loudly on this. So partnership, as I, I was talking about, then. Uh, external relation is very important. You know why, brothers and sisters? Because the wealth of knowledge you have and the experience you have is more than you can imagine. The value of it is incredible. We don't know how to sell it. We don't know how to classify it. We don't know how to manage it. You know why Google and uh, what's the other one, uh, Facebook and the others, making these tens of billions of dollars? Because they manage the information we give them. That's why they made, the, they made the billions. We have a lot of information, a lot of experience, but how to manage it, how to store it, how to sell it, and how to classify it, and how to speak about it. If I can ask each and every one of you with the wealth of knowledge you have, it's incredible. Incredible. The achievement you have done is incredible. But we are not good salesmen. We are not good communicators. Because people look at us because we don't speak English. I was in Azerbaijan two weeks ago. A humanitarian conference was organized uh, under the auspices of uh, the Excellency, the President of the country. I met a great woman. Great, with the meaning of great. You know what's the only problem? They don't speak English. They speak Azari or Russian or uh, Turkish, understand. But they don't speak the, national, the international language. But the achievement and the vision and the dimension of thinking of this woman is and was incredible. So this kind of stars, we need to put them on the international arena. And it's our duty to look at the second generation. We can train them while we are in the top position in the organization, whether chairman or CEO. I have to be surrounding myself with the younger generation who will take it forward for the coming 50 years. I will make a challenge now. Can you invite me to your house after 50 years, sir? If I'm alive, yes, why not? You will, inshallah. inshallah. And you, what will you cook for me? Whatever you like. No, the best food you like. Okay. Rice? Of course, rice. <laughs> and, <laughs> and dal. I love dal. By the way, dal is my favorite, not, not the meat. Ah, very good. So what I'm talking about, the generation to come, I have to plan for their arrival when I took them by the hand, like my sons, like my daughters. If you know the head of, of uh, uh, David in KPK, he's one of the young Islamic leaf workers. As an university student, then alhamdulillah now he is. Our people went to the United Nations, 
people want to become CEO of different organizations. Because we took them by the hand when we are still healthy, strong, and we injected them with the information. And this is the role of pioneers sitting in this room amongst you. Prepare the generation to come, not only for the organization, for our community, for our area, and for our country, and for humanity. Keep creating future leaders, and be happy to see the success while you are still in your position, and when you give them the leadership status. When I left Islamic Leaf 2008, I don't know how many million it was it, people thought if somebody successful, successful organization, leave, that may be, must be something wrong happen. Either he is stolen some money, or he has fiddling with the relationship with women. Alhamdulillah, I came out clean. Very sound and strong organization. And I treat all the women as my daughters. Because all of them are younger than myself. Okay. So leave the organization. When it talks about you in a nice way. Not when people lock the door behind you and throw something at your back and said, never come back. But we need to prepare the future generation. Okay. How many minutes now? Because I, I don't want to talk. I want to, to have an interaction. Take your time. Yeah, but take your time to win. Because, because those, those, those great people in the room are more knowledgeable than myself. To talk again for 10 minutes? Okay. No, no. My message is, you are more Balushi than myself. But I'll challenge you. I became Balushi now. Especially because I'm in Balushistan. I'm Pakistani as well. Because I have to honor the people who built the organization who started in 1984, as Brother uh, Omair was talking about. It was your community. In London, in Birmingham, in Manchester, who gave the money, understood, unemployed, the elderly, the pensioner. All those people were the foundation of this organization. That's why when I met the Queen in 2004, I was wearing shirwan and kameez. I was not wearing the normal suit for the European or the Egyptian. Even I have been criticized by people. You are not a Pakistani. You are not Asian. Even you are African. I said, but we have to honor the people who led this organization to grow fast and effective. Coming back to you as people who have mission, who have vision, have message to deliver, and they believe in your country. What we need is to create the power through creating leadership in the generation to come. From the young men and women and to empower them. I'm very happy today to see uh, quite a few number of women in, in the room. Excellent. To conclude in my metaphor, because when, I are, when I'm in a plane, I don't have anything to do, I write. And Allah give me the ability. Definition of development is a change from negative to positive, from destruction to construction, from ignorance to education, from sickness to health. You have to make a change. Development is not about huh, a project I'm going to please a donor. No. It's about knowledge. It's about empowerment. It's about ownership. Empowerment of whom? Of the local community. Ownership of whom? Of the local community. This is development that we need to have. One of the outcome of uh, the recommendation of World Humanitarian Summit was localization. I love it. To be on the top of the agenda. Localization, localization, localization. Let us build a strong local community. Strong local organization. And let us invest in its empowerment. 
and be making them to be able to understand how they connect, they communicate, they write projects, they uh, evaluate the project and involve them from the planning to not only to the execution of the project but to the review and and accountability on the donor and the organization themselves. So partnership for me is many things make the positive change. The simplest way is we have to make a positive change. We're talking about some villages that we visited yesterday and the day before yesterday, uh, yeah, yesterday and today. By having one well water and this uh, solar system there, this encouraged people to come to live in this village. We saw a village which have just a primary school, encouraged women to send their children, even they send their children alone to have the primary education. This is a positive change. Just a school, just a class. Okay? And this is what we need to treat development. And I am not trying to preach to the converted. You know it better than myself. Okay? But what I am talking about, partnership and the external relation, is the protection of the process of development. And this is the foundation of the sustainable growth of organization and the sustainability of the organization. And the existence of such organization for a very long time to come, like we agreed to meet in 2068. Yeah, yeah. 2068, you and me. And sister said dal and rice. Yes. And do, no meat, huh? No meat. No meat. We're vegetarian. Keep the animals happy. Because oh, yes. <laughs> the animals, when Kurbani came, when Eid al Adha comes, all the animals cry, go, 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 keep, keep away from me. And we, we decorate them, we put them flowers on them, then we slaughter them to eat them. <laughs> so I'm going to stop because I would like to receive some comments from you or some. some uh, Questions, and I am a relief worker or social worker. Wajazakum Allah khair, wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yes, sister. Thank you very much, Dr. Munir Bana, founder of Islamic Relief. Uh, I would like to share that we have uh, representation from different land departments and uh, public and private institutes. And we have representation um, from Environmental Protection Agency, uh, Director General Environmental Protection Agency, Captain Tariq Zainsa. Thank you very much for joining us. We have representation from Agriculture Extension, Agriculture Research Department, Director General Agriculture Research Javed Zainsa. Thank you very much. And uh, Director General uh, Bruchsan Agriculture Research and Development Center, uh, Dr. Hanan Burrosa. And uh, we have uh, and the uh, Washuk, uh, um, Mr. Sadar Zabit Rekisa, thank you very much for joining. And we have uh, uh, Ms. Roshan Guruja, thank you very much for coming. And uh, um, I hope I'm not missing anyone. And we have uh, representation. Um, Secretary of Public Health. Yes, uh, I'm sorry. Um, we have Secretary of Public Health, Mr. Uh, Abdul Fatissa, and um, we have representation from Academia, University of Balochistan, and uh, Sadar Bahadur Khan Women University, Brigham's University, and line departments including uh, um, Agriculture uh, Extension, and uh, Agriculture um, Water Management, Engineering, and Irrigation, and uh, we have civil representation from civil society, including uh, BES organization, PPF, uh, BRSP, IDSP, and uh, we have representation from Social Welfare Department, and uh, I'm sorry if I've missed something, host organization, and uh, representation from media as well. So we have very enriched participation in this room, and uh, now the for, uh, forum is open for your experience sharing, and particularly in the context of Balochistan, I would really like uh, to share your experiences and needs uh, to Dr. Hanan Khan. Thank you very much. Don't be shy to ask me any question. I get used to answer some, some questions, if I can. Yes, come on, brother. You want to stand here or here? It's up to you. Because there's a microphone here.
uh, also... So it's my secretary who let me down. <laughs> Uh, I would love to work in every, not every uh, district, or in every village of, of uh, Baluchistan, inshallah. And we are fighting very hard for putting Baluchistan on the international arena for development. Uh, we are doing our best. And to be very honest, maybe Omair and uh, Brother Ali know that I've been, since I came here the first time, 20, 2001, at the time of the war in Afghanistan. And I've been waiting a long time to come here. But before 2001, it was my dream to come to Balochistan. Because I knew, as an individual, and the need. Problem of development and poverty alleviation, it does not attract especially the community, the, 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 the ordinary donors. What we've been discussing yesterday, how to utilize the youth of Pakistan and shift them to let them to go and be exposed to this area. We've got 200 million plus. At least 50 to 60 million of them are young, able, bright individuals. We need to let them to live the issue of Balochistan and the other country, and the others, not countries, and other areas in, in the country. We will do our best through Muslim Chats Forum, or through Humanitarian Forum, or through Islamic Relief. But unfortunately, the international community are, is driven by the disasters. Disaster Myanmar, influx of refugees, about 1.2 million in Bangladesh, Syria, 7 million displaced inside, about 6 or 7 million outside. Yemen, as you can see, the disaster in Yemen is incredible disaster. Don't want to politicize it because it's already politicized. Iraq, 3 million internally displaced or 2.6 million internally displaced people inside uh, Iraq. The conflict in the South Sudan between the tribal uh, people and the West Africa uh, drought and others. So we are competing for Balochistan on the international level. What we need to convince our diaspora community in Canada, we have a conference call with them tonight, in America, in UK, to shift 
from relief into development and poverty alleviation. And we'll do that. It's difficult, but we we'll have to do that, inshallah. And we'll be with you, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Yes, brother. You can say your organization and... Uh, I am from irrigation department. Bismillah, mashallah. I love I loved agriculture, by the way. I'm a medical doctor, but I love yes, agriculture. Brother. Yeah, yeah. We can't do... We, you can't separate us. No, no, you can't. You cannot. You marry them. But what I'm <laughs> going to tell you is what I'm going to ask you. Yes. For drinking water. Yes. Minimum cost. Because now we are talking about gawadar all the time. Gawadar, gawadar, gawadar. If you develop gawadar for a drinking purpose, industrial purpose, all these small clusters will all join together and come to gawadar. We will not be able to control gawadar. Mm -hmm. You globally have more vision than us. There is, there is a small uh, instrument which is known as water netting, which needs 30% minimum moisture in the air. Mm. You can net it and you can get that droplets into the drums and the small clusters of our population which is scattered in, in Gawadar where the moisture content is more than 70%. You can make these clusters live in their own area. So I would like you to help us in these small clusters of the population living in Gawadar to settle wherever they are if we provide them clean drinking water which is Minimum cost is water netting. Jazakallah khad, you want to answer? Uh, I, I, on the spot probably it's difficult to do that. But um, obviously in saying Chadi, um, when we went in, and the purpose was also that the, 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 the displacement is not good for anyone. Uh, it has psychological, it has financial losses uh, for everyone, the families. And we have seen back in 2000 as well. So uh, what you need to do is provide that basic uh, uh, necessities. And water becomes the first ever necessity. If you talk to community, water becomes the first thing. Uh, so you rightly uh, mentioned water as, as a pull factor uh, for community to stay in their own locations. Um, we have not thought about Gawadar as such and has not been part of our strategic planning until now. But if this is something which is um, from our partners, from the government of Pakistan, government of Balochistan, something comes up, uh, we could look into this. Uh, and then as part of our expansion as well, um, we've been working in um, the Baloch districts uh, until now, but we have plans for Koita and uh, the other parts of Balochistan uh, province as well. So Gawadar could feature into that. Uh, so we take that on board. Uh, and we'll plan uh, accordingly, inshallah. Thank you. Jazakallah khair, you can be here. Uh, first time to visit Somalia, for me it was 2005. It was a no-go area. And in a town called uh, Garawi in Pontland, our plane landed because we have to charter a plane to go around the north of, of Somalia, uh, Kenya, and uh, South Sudan. And when we landed, we had representation from different uh, ministries. And each one of them was talking about the need of his ministry. But the question was to support what you are talking about. We have only $100,000 for only one project. You have to agree on such a project. Each one of them said water, 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 water. The most attractive factor of people staying anywhere is water. Even when we digging the wells in South Sudan, in a place called uh, Warab in Wau, an area totally not Muslims, either atheist or Christian. And when we met the governor of the area, he said that you people sorted out nearly 30% of the need of the whole district. When we were digging one of the wells, you can imagine the women were actually making this. I don't know what you do in Pakistan. What do you do it here? Uh, you do it? <laughs> we do it. <laughs> Arab culture. Okay, fine. Uh, what you do in, in the wedding? 
Fighting. <laughs> this is not Arab culture. <laughs> okay. And they, they were actually very, uh, very joyful because they are going not to f walk for miles to feed the animal and to have clean water. The same happened to us when we went to Kashmir in 1997-1998 in Balandri and Raulakot. And because we found that the young girls cannot go to school because every day she goes down and up and down the mountain five, six times. There's no time for school. And when we build these water tanks on the top of the mountain in Balandri and Raulakot, everybody was happy. Not because it's Islamic relief. It's a partnership with the local community. They could be 30%. We made 70% of the cost of the, of, the of the water tanks, which they built it themselves. This is important. This is important, this is important. Water is number one. After that, you can go to education. After that, you can go to health. After that, you can go to local market and what you call it, uh, microfinance or livelihood program. Education. Educa I, said, I mentioned education. I said, after, after water, I mentioned education. Thank you, sir. Any, any more difficult question? Come, brother. Yeah. We can take one or two. Of, uh, we'll take one from the table and then we'll come back again to the table. Please. Please introduce yourself. Bring the, the microphone closer to you, please. Bring it to, cl closer, closer to you. Yeah. No, it's working, it's working. It is, I can hear you. No, no, no. Give, give. Yeah, yeah, give, give. Dr. Hani, I have a couple of comments. One for you personally, and a second comment is for all. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, very interactive and informal talk, and you shared your uh, first hand information in a very appropriate way. But as far as I know the Egyptians, their uh, sense of humor is world renowned. So I was expecting something, you know, <laughs> more informal. Uh, apart from that, uh, yes, no doubt. When you talk about development, when you go for the collaboration, so it is, it is a sort of hard task for you whenever you are in a situation or in a place like Pakistan, and in Pakistan, when you are in Balochistan, we used to call it, we used to call it, not now. I guess after CPEC, the situation has changed, bit for a bit changed. We used to call Balochistan the underdeveloped area of underdeveloped country. But I, I, I personally feel like that whenever we talk about the relief, the emergency, the, the, the the, the, the aid given to the people, those who are suffered by the disasters or the emergencies, we always, we, I mean, by we, we I mean the, the, the uh, development organizations are those who are busy in, in this field for the, uh, for the sake of development. We are always reactive. Why not proactive? I mean, uh, Islamic Libya, uh, we, we, we hear about you that you are uh, providing the sort of incentives and sort of uh, relief funds and other commodities to the people. Why not we go for, I mean, this is, this is a, a generic comment for all of those who are involved in the development sector. Why not we go for the proactive developmental activities? Like, I give you an example, one of my colleagues is sitting here. In University of Balochistan, I'm from academia, I'm sorry, I, I could not introduce myself. I'm Dr. Zorub Bazek, and I'm from University of Balochistan. One of my colleagues, he is heading the disaster, disaster department in University of Balochistan. So research opportunities are there. Why not the development, as well as the government agencies, they, they join hand with us. We can go for the triple helix uh, theory. We can have a collaboration, a triangle between the industry, academia and government. So I guess this is the time. We must go for the development sector in collaboration in the sense that we must be more proactive as compared to reactive. Thank you very much. I will uh, 
The most difficult task in front of all of us as fundraisers is to raise fund for development. The easiest task is to raise fund for relief. And this is not only the Muslims or the people from the East. It's a nature. It's a nature, natural thing in our hearts. Whether we are from America or from Europe or from Pakistan or from Middle East or whatever it is. The easiest thing. What we need to develop, which this is a theory which I was trying, you can help me because you are academia. I'm a street worker. I'm not academia like you. I cannot rise to your level of intellectuality. To have fatwa, any imams here or sheikh, but I'm mufti in social work. I'm not mufti in religious work. I am mufti in social work. Okay? Not religious work. All right? So don't sentence me. I am responsible as a development worker to empower community, to enable the community. What I want from this multi-billion dollar budget of humanitarian response, a cut to start building the local community and to be like a system. Allah has created us to help people, but I'm not responsible to feed everybody. My responsibility is to empower the local community and let them to prevent the disaster happening to them again. And this is what we need to advocate. Development is about advocacy. Development is about building partnership with, I don't know how many uh, uh, civil society organizations here. They have to sit down together and decide on a project in a certain area and put the money and the expertise on the table from each one of them. This is what the other people are doing. That's why you might find a project to cost $100 million. The money is being paid by 20 or 15 organizations. Let me give you a practical example which you have done in humanitarian forum two, two years ago. When you, before the World Humanitarian Summit happened in May 2016, that the UN is not going to do it again. Because we have heard from certain governments that they don't want to sit down with any local NGOs. That's why the, present the representation of the governments to the World Humanitarian Summit in Istanbul two years ago was about 50 to 60 countries. Maybe half of them or three quarters of them are represented by ministers or civil servants. We decided to make our dream, which we call it World Humanitarian Action Forum. You know, brother, professor, and to all of you, the idea was our idea. The effort was our effort. The money was our money. But when we organized the conference last year, I think uh, Kazi Isa was there with us in, in London. When we organized the conference, we did not put humanitarian forum name on the table. But we made it as a partner. And this is where the ego... And the brother who from the Humanitarian Forum was organizing it, wanted to put his title in the Humanitarian Forum, said, no, don't put your title as Humanitarian Forum. Make it your title as World Humanitarian Action Forum, which is include everybody. There were 35 international organizations helping, funding, organizing. We give them the ownership from day one. And the name of the Forum was not there. It was just one of the 35 names. This is where you would love to start creating your development program. When I, as a chairman or a president or a CEO, don't have this ego to my organization. How big is my logo? Is my logo in the front page or the back page? It doesn't make any difference. Most important than me as a president or you as a chairman or she as a CEO is the people that you would like to get the clean water with what, what is the system called? Water knitting. Uh, water knitting. It's, it's, I, need, I need to kiss your head because I have never heard this name before. Water knitting. Okay. I'm learning. I came here to learn. But unless, to be very honest, unless we sit down and we look objectively at the issue, at Pakistan as an issue, at Kashmir as an issue, 
as Balochistan as an issue, as KPK as an issue, as poverty as an issue, as deprivation as an issue, as orphans as an issue, we are not going to succeed in development. Because the other, or the other organizations are very attracted to humanitarian response. Because humanitarian response does not build society. Let me tell you a verse from the Quran for the alim in the room with us. In Surah Al-Ma'un, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, very dynamic word, 1400 years ago plus. Ara'ayta alladhi yukadhu biddin, who is the one who denies the day of judgment? Is the one, first of all, who treat the orphan badly, dhalika alladhi yadu al yatim, get out, you sticky, young, ah, miserable boy or girl. Wala yahud, ala ta'ala miskin. You know, the had in Arabic, what does it mean? Is advocacy. If we don't do advocacy, will be considered by Allah like those people who deny the day of judgment. Go back to these verses in Surah Ma'un. And the had could be to spread the news of the needs of the needy and to protect the most vulnerable, which is the young orphan. This is what we need to educate our donors. We cannot educate our donors, brothers and sisters in this room, unless we sit down and do make this kind of uh, concerted effort by all of us. It has to be all of us. So the government will listen, the World Bank will listen, the other big organization will listen, the foreign organization will listen because they listen, they listen to the collective. It's not about competing for the fund. When we are trying to train the Syrian organization in Turkey, uh, they have more than 2,000 organizations started working in Turkey. They were not looking at the main objective. Most of them were looking at how much money I can get from this donor. And especially when I used to bring, some, when we used to bring somebody from Middle East and uh, Gulf, they come. They say that he's coming from Kuwait or from Saudi. He must have money. Let's go to attend the workshop. There's no money. It's about collective. You can do wonders when you Bring the collective together, inshallah. Any other question? Can I have a mic? I have to answer it. Thank you for the question. Um, thank you. Uh, yes, um, I would like to add, and I'll come back to you. I would like to she add. is the boss. Uh, <laughs> I'm just moderating it. No, you are the boss. Uh, thank you. I just do, uh, would like to add something to uh, Dr. Hani's um, discussion. Um, recently, we conducted um, a workshop. It was basically um, the people application of Bidum's University uh, in the Mental Sciences Department, and uh, Dr. Zohar Parizi uh, was also invited in that. And the purpose of conducting these workshops, particularly with Cadmia, is one of the purposes behind engaging the Cadmia is basically uh, I have learned from my uh, seniors and my teacher uh, from Disaster Management Department of University of Bridgestan who often say that uh, research, uh, development with, without research becomes obsolete. And we are following that as well. And we are trying to integrate the line departments, the civil society, and academia. And we really want to explore some significant researches from academia so that we could um, discuss with line departments that how these researches, these, these hands-on information, facts and figures can be incorporated in the policy development and implementation frameworks. And for that, we have recently introduced signed MOU with PDMA, and we are uh, expecting to have DRR forum, which will be inclusive, inclusive of academia, academia, representation of academia, civil society, and line departments. And the purpose of this DRR forum will be to have an integrated approach and we would really uh, look forward to have multi-sectoral integrated plans where representation of all academia will be um, uh, will also be there. And secondly, we have recently uh, contacted academia, uh, the existing universities in Balochistan, University of Balochistan, Bildung's given agriculture college and Sadar Bahadur Khandaman University to share their research work with us and we can see that how that research work can be put up to different platforms. Even I have sent emails to all the department heads. Hope I have um, shared your concern and we are really hopeful that with collaboration and with integration we'll be able to achieve the goals. Can I have a mic? I want to
I'm sorry, I'll answer your question. I was also running a project of 100 dam from the irrigation department. We are at the first hydropower she wants to talk. What is that mean? The electrical department of the IT University is involved. We refuse the consultant that you will not design our university students and our department will design the hydropower unit, which is one fourth of the actual cost which was given. The second is the Kushda Engineering University. We are making a dam uh, at Kushda, the first, not the first, but the, the biggest uh, gravity dam. The civil engineering final year students are doing, doing the geotech survey for us in that dam. They are fully involved. Again, the second has been put aside. Third is water netting, which we are taking part in, but the Water Resources University at Uttar, the professors and the students are helping us in that by getting the materials. So we and the academy are together. Jazakallah khair. May Allah bless you, inshallah. So let me come back to this research. Research sometimes could be expensive. So what I want, to, what we want to do is five, six organizations share the idea of the research so the research could be done. It doesn't have to be a burden on only one organization. It could be done, and this is what we've been doing, actually to cut down the burden of the cost of research on certain subjects. So maybe hand in hand for research, because we cannot, I'm, I'm telling you, brothers and uh, sisters, I don't like to say I'm telling you, I'm struggling to raise funds for development, for advocacy, and for research. The mindset of the donors is not in this area, unfortunately. So we have to put hands and hands together to do it. First of all, Dr. Andy, I was always longing to know who the relief uh, founder of the Islamic Relief was, and so nice to meet you today. And knowing your work from 2004, what you have done in Baluchistan, and today seeing you, I feel after listening to your talk, uh, PPF, uh, being uh, chair to the PPF, I think PPF is in the right direction when we are listening to you that uh, PPF also, you must have met Kadi Asman, that we also work with the community, we work with the partner organization, and we are, that shows that we are in the right direction when we listen to you, that you said, it's always nice to work with the partners, and that the local community should be involved. And not, that is what PPF is doing. They're involving all the local community because the strength is the community. If the community is there, the strength develops there. And of course, the sustainability also remains if we involve the community in it. At present, we are also working with the line departments like uh, PHE and education and all. You were talking about the youth. I personally, that's my personal experience and what personally I would like to say, that the youth, I feel, should be more involved in technical. Because like everybody is looking towards government and government cannot give job to everybody. So to take them towards their self-employment, I think for them technical training are very, very important. Coming to the orphan children, I have my board member also sitting at the back. We have an orphan institution known as the SOS Village. And if you have time and if you visit, we'll be so very happy. And we really salute you for all the good work which you are doing. And God stay blessed and continue the good work. And I'm sure after listening to you, we will follow your footsteps. You have to promise money because she's a world banker. I'm misrepresented over here. <laughs> so first of all, I would like to comment about your not being the Mufti. Anybody who's from Jamiat ul Azhar is a great Mufti for us. Not me. And not in me. that means you are a Mufti for us. No way, no anyway, way. 
So my uh, comment was, the government entities are all around over here. They're more than willing to work and they have their existence in the areas, like drought affected areas, disaster ridden areas. But there is no money. Mm. And government of Balochistan in specific, government of Pakistan in a broader way, they don't have money at all for the development work. To be told frankly, everybody knows that. While you were saying, you said you work with the strategy of open doors, but I have never ever seen any exterior uh, donor like DFID, they have their great existence in UK, and Oxfam UK. So why don't you, uh, no, no, you collaborate with UK, Oxfam, and uh, DFID and other organizations? Why do we only co co collaborate with the Muslim philanthropists? You should open the doors for us down for the Okay, uh, the question is why shouldn't we open for Muslim philanthropists? Oxfam. The, huh? Oxfam. Oxfam. Oh, 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 of, of course, of course, of course. It's everyone. Co collaboration is for everybody. When, when you talk about, uh, I did not want to talk about uh, the experience of one organization because it would be boring. But uh, Islamic Leaf, which is uh, represented by Omair and the sister, has a very good and partnership with Oxfam, with Save the Children, with Christian Aid, with Scaffold, with World Vision, with uh, uh, Lutheran churches in, in Geneva, and, 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 and. When I was a president, we signed an MOU with UNHCR, with World Food Program, and with others. So all, we used to be invited by the World Bank in Washington to speak there. Uh, at the time of uh, Wolfson, Wolf, uh, well, two, two, two. one is Wolf and one is Wolfson. One of them was sacked, then one was a good one. Uh, I don't know which one, of them. I, can't, I can't remember. We used to go to Washington to see, to talk about actually the humanitarian work. So we opened the door. I think what, what we're trying to say, we're a little bit scared of the cultural barrier, of the language barrier, and of the perception that those people coming here because they want to change our culture and spoil our women and spoil our youth. If we are strong enough and educate our women and our youth, nobody will spoil them. Nobody will spoil them. Because woman in society is my wife, is my daughter, is my sister, is my mother. And they have to empower her. And the best supporter for the Prophet ﷺ from day one was Bibi Khadija. Financer, lobbyist, advocate, and she took him as a wife, she took him as a colleague, she took him as a believer. She was the first woman to impress Islam. And she was the first one to become Muslim as well. This is the role of women. So we have to educate them to let anybody, any foreigner, it could be myself, who is trying to spoil the culture in Palestine or in Kashmir. Don't duck me because I'm a Muslim, I'm a good guy. There's some Muslims like myself, I'm saying it, I'm just talking about myself as a bad guy, could come and spoil the culture, could come and impose a culture which is not suitable for the local community on you, could come and bring different fiqh which is not suitable for the society, unfortunately. So it's not only the non-Muslims who can spoil the culture, but also the Muslims can do the same. So let us talk about how can we come as collective uh, to work together and be able to protect ourselves. Let me conclude by letting Umayyad to stand up, please. How oh. old are you now? Forty-five. Forty-five. He started working in Islamic life at the age of what? It was twenty-five. Twenty-five. Nineteen ninety-nine, nineteen ninety-eight, nineteen two thousand, and now he is the country director. He learned the difficult way. That's what I'm saying. While you are here, bring future leadership, train them, empower them, put them on a platform. How many countries you have visited and been in charge of before you become the country director? 15. At least 15 countries. Was put in different countries, traveling here and there. There was no barrier because the talent is here. The innovation is here. The vision is here. Don't Get somebody like myself coming by a parachute. See, you know the discussion between you and me and, uh, and Ali two days ago? 
I was trying to invent a solution for the problem of the villager. You can say it in, in Urdu if you want. Okay. Until then, why didn't you make local market and people walk from this village to this village? And they were resisting because this, what this man is talking about. But they were very polite. And when I visited the villages yesterday and today, I found that I am putting unrealistic solution because of the road condition, because of the number of the people in the village, because of the distance between village and others. It cannot be done. It could be done in Syria, it could be done in the Middle East, but not here. I have to find another solution. So solution is local, innovation is local, and development is local. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Tafid. Uh, one last uh, point from the Muslim Agriculture Research and Development Center. Yeah, my name is Nadeem Sadiq, and I'm working as a Director of Natural Resources in Bulestan Agriculture Research Center, which was formerly uh, Arizona Research Institute, Arizona Research Center in Kuwait. So I am basically a researcher, engineer and researcher, and I have an experience of working in the field. What I will try to explain is that uh, what are my observations in Pakistan and what are important. First of all, I thank you to Dr. Hani Abana for very nice, very nice uh, speech on collaboration for development. Very informative. So what I understand in the present situation of Pakistan is and what will be in near future that we have to work on water as we have already told. It, it should be our main necessity and we have to work right from now. So speaking technically, technically what I have observed in my experience that we have almost, we lost all the water. Without that, we are facing shortage of water. We deliberately lost all the water. We have about 12 to 13, about 14 million acre feet of water. You will explain in detail. About 14 million acre feet of water, which is annually uh, falling, which annually fall in the on the uh, lands of Balochistan province, and which runs away. We can't harvest them. Most of the water is run in the sea, in Afghanistan, in Punjab, in uh, the uh, sea. So, but I think, what is the future need of Pakistan? We have to, individually we have to go, at last we have to harvest the water, rain water harvest, and we have to cultivate it on crops. Uh, uh, our experience shows that if uh, something like uh, such a kind of project is developed by is developed by Islamic Relief. We are willing to help you. And uh, as per Asian Development Bank in 2012 and 14, Dr. Shahid Ahmed was here. But he worked that uh, these are his, his figures that this water is lost, and ultimately we have to come here because we have uh, in order to survive the process. Zakallah. <laughs> Thank you. As a matter of respect. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Honorable Dr. Ali sir, Country Director of Islamic Relief, Pakistan, Mayor Samrazi, Distinguished Guests, on behalf of Islamic Relief, Pakistan, I would like to thank all of you for being here, for your participation, for everything. Thank you.
Can we finish and can you press finish and post or share? Finish. Yeah, finish, finish. Share, 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 share. Share, 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 share. Okay, that's done. And the same. Ask, ask him to do it. Finish and share.